Welcome to the Lordcraft section of this tutorial series on these mods. Hello, it's Alex. Yeah, the wizard. Yeah, uh, setting me yeah. up for friend. And Look at this. this <laughs> what are you doing? Untapped power. I'm just burning down this random forest. You're just burning down a random forest. Yeah, just to show off. Excellent. Yeah. Right, that's wow. good. Okay. Um, so, are you ready to uh, begin the tutorial then, I guess? We're doing a research this time. Yes, so we're going to start off with research, seeing as I've just changed that in the latest version. Um, that would be a brief explanation of what it was before, but this should hopefully cover it in detail. Um, I, I'm going to be honest, this is the only bit of the mod I really know how it works, because Charles showed me yesterday evening. Oh, no, this morning. <laughs> yeah, technically this morning. <laughs> technically this morning. Right. So I'm actually going to clear my research quickly, just in case I have some already. And I'm going to switch into survival mode to uh, begin. So, first thing you want to craft is this book of knowledge, which requires glowstone, redstone, and a book. So, that may involve you going to the nether. You could potentially kill a witch and get the glowstone from there, but that's up to you, because um, depends on how you want to do it. So, it details a couple of things like how to use certain bits of the mod, um, but the main section we're interested in here is research, which opens up this little menu of things. You can see we've already Got a on the left side, we've got a list of researches we can do, and on the right, we've got a list of researches we've done. And you can click on one of those to view stuff about it. Thanks to the uh, state cards. Fleeing some cows. Thank you. Uh, so you can read some stuff about it. All of the research in here has a little entry about it. Um, we're going to start with water research for now because I don't know, it's quite an easy one to do. So I'm going to do that. Just find the book. There it is. So, okay. Show, it's showing the page of symbols, as it were. Um, yeah, NEI is recommended as usual. Yeah, so if you look at NEI here, in the old version you use these inscription tiles to enter in each letter, and you still need blank ones. You don't need these other ones at the moment. Um, you can still get them in this current version, but you don't need them. Though they are helpful as a guide if you don't know what it is you have to draw. So these you have to connect together to um, write something. Um, like so you click on one and click on another to connect it. And then you can just, if you want to clear it, you just click off. You select one and you click off to um, whether it's to connect it and it will do nothing with it. Um, up here you can cancel the research. And down here you can see the letter you have to enter. So I want to enter A. So if I didn't know what that was, I could look in GI here and find an inscription tile for A. And I see it's just a straight line. So if I draw a straight line, click on this button, it will do that letter. And it also adds it to this list on the side here. And this is sort of like a shortcut such. If I were to press the A up here, it automatically fills in the, um, the lines that you need. In this case, it's only one, so it's not too difficult. So we want to put Q in next, because it's aqua we're trying to type in, so just a shortcut of that. Is that have the same one? I was like, oh, that'd be why. Ah. Uh, the falls randomized. No. Uh, it's always the same. For each uh, research. So it's just, you're writing out a word rather than a... Rather than just a set of letters. Yeah. So that's Q, I believe. So I enter that, and it fills in there. And we now have to put in U for aqua. The third letter, which looks like that. So we can clear away two of those and one more of those. Oop, that gives us U. And then we do A again, so easy. And that completes the research. And you can then view the entry on it if you so wish, or not. Do you. Um, okay. So the reason why you want to do research is because certain recipes require it to be done. So for example this damp crystal thing here requires water research to be done. Requires four simple crystals and a water bucket makes four damp crystals. And to do... So they give you mm, watery manner. Yeah, so you'll need it's that. A later, I guess. Yes. So if, if a recipe requires a research stuff you have to craft yourself a uh, arcane workbench to do it. 
arcane workbench is like a regular crafting table, except that you can um, leave stuff in it permanently, and in some cases it actually performs a little bit faster than the crafting table for calculations. So, you never know. Um, so I've done water research, so I should just be able to put crystals in. Yeah. Like so. Grab a water bucket. And it should allow me to do it. If I hadn't done the research, it wouldn't let me do that. So for example, if I was to look at one of the other crystal types, like Earth for example, it requires a piece of coal. Stop it, please. If I put that in, it's not going to let me do it, because I haven't researched Earth. But if I were to research Earth, I could. Now, the interesting thing you may have noticed is the fact that all of the other elements disappeared from the left screen here. That's because at the start you can only research one element. You unlock the ability to, to research more later on, though. So don't worry about that too much. So, you know, choose which one you, you know, find the coolest to start with, or whatever be the most useful for you. Yeah. So. Or you could just do the easiest and try and rush to the stage where you can get a second one. Exactly, yeah. Certainly, certainly a major possibility. Of close your boat. Exactly. So, that's the gist of research, as far as I can see. Um, research is used for other things, so... Um, this other device here, which is called an Arcane Forge. The recipes in here also require research. Um, but uh, we'll get onto that in a moment. Once we talk about mana. Mana. So the next system we have is mana. Which is going to require you to build a void interface. Like so. Uh, which is, doesn't require any research. However, it requires this mana infused dust. Water which, siphon required. Yes, we need to make a water siphon. So, a water siphon, it's also pretty simple, that requires water research. And when you put it in there, if you right click on there, you probably still need a water siphon yourself, don't you? Yep. Yep. So, the void interface actually, it acts as an interface onto your own soul, as opposed to a block that serves only the owner. So everyone, that's their own little individual. Yeah, so for example, if you were to take these, this, this damp crystal, I throw on the floor, uh, put it in there, so you right click on it to put it in. You see, you now have mana. Thousand. Yep, and if Thousand. I were to just right click on it, I don't see any, because okay. that's your mana. So is it due to my terrible level, I've got a cap at a thousand mana. The more water siphons you put in there, the more mana you can store. Okay, right here. There's a thousand per siphon. So I'll give you another Is one. Is there a hard limit to the amount of siphons you have? Currently, no. And I don't intend that to be particularly into the future. Because that's well, the wrong way to... it's not the right thing. No. I don't intend that to be one because of the fact that it can be a bit annoying having to continuously recharge your mana. So it's sort of like the more you play, the stronger you get, kind of thing. Okay, yeah. So you want to constantly keep upgrading your mana storage. If, you, if this block got destroyed, does your mana also go? Or is it just an interface into it's your mana? It's just an interface into your mana. Right, and you'd have to build up the appropriate number of water siphons to contain and exceed your previous mana, I guess. Yes, exactly. And another thing you can craft is a thing called a Void Eye. And that is used to check your mana when you're not near the Void interface. Okay. Is that anyone, anyone can craft it? Anyone can craft that. It requires a research at the Arcane Forge. Um, which is just a void interface plus a piece of gold, I think, to make that. So, let's talk about the Arcane Forge then. So, Arcane Forge has a bunch of recipes, requiring two inputs each and producing one output. And it also requires mana to be powered, which is this thing here. Right. So, you can right click to um, cycle it in theory. Mine's not doing that. I'm not sure why. Um, Oh god. Oh yeah, because right. I haven't unlocked other recent other manners yet, so it's not gonna let me cycle it right now. It's fine. So uh, with this Arcane Forge. You saw earlier we had mana infused dust, and the Arcane Forge actually has a more efficient recipe, but it requires research. So we can if we're in creative mode, we don't need to research it. But it's just an example. You also don't need mana if you're in creative mode either. It won't use it up. But, uh, okay. So if you're feeling a bit cheap. Yeah, you don't need to worry about it too much. I mean, 
not so sure switching into creative mode is really an option in survival mode. But, you know. Yeah, well, uh, that's an option. Because I'm in creative mode uh, now, you can actually just do this craft quite easily. Just filling a water siphons up. I see. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> As you can see, I made matter infused dust, which is a much more efficient ma method than using um, all of those crystals that we had before. There's also a uh, furnace slot in here, which you can just put anything that you would normally have to smell in. The furnace. Oh, it. it doesn't require power of any sort. It'll just slowly go. So all these shard of water matches ingots and stuff used for uh, later. They, so they just they have a few uses in many contraptions, but they're also used to make armor and tools. Okay, we'll cover them later. Yeah, I mean, they're slightly better than... So the infused metal is slightly better than iron, and infused gem is slightly better than diamond, basically. So... Okay, so you can use mana infused dust instead of crystals? No, that is used for crafting. Okay. Right, so is there any way to up your mana rather than just spamming crystals? Okay. Other than just crystals, or...? No, that's the only way. Okay, so you just gotta make sure you every time you see a crystal, pick up the sucker up. Yeah, so you can mine them in the ground uh, inside of simple crystal deposits. So I'll put one of these down. Um, so grab me a pickaxe. Oh, grab a pickaxe. You need an iron pickaxe or above. You'll see. Are they uh, fortune affected? Yep, yeah, fortune affected. Uh, drops usually two or three to each one. Okay. Just uh, throw some fortune on this. That was very unlucky. It was unlucky. Um, so you got more there. I think so. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's definitely more. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so. They spawn yeah. throughout the world. They're fairly common. It's not too hard to get them. And of course, with water, you only need to add a water bucket to it to get upgraded. Um, Indeed. So over here we have robes, which is one of the things you can make. These actually reduce the mana cost of using things like the Arcane Forge. Um, so. so does the Arcane Forge take from your mana? It takes from your mana, yeah. When you press the button on it, it takes from your mana. And you can, when you've got other mana types, you can change which mana it, it uses. So either water, earth, fire, light or dark. Okay. So... Uh, but again, the furnace section of it doesn't use mana at all. It just goes very slowly. So, the robes give a 10% discount for each piece and a plus 10% if you're entirely if you're wearing an entire set. That's pretty useful. Yeah, they're all 50% off, which is pretty nice. Pretty damn good. Yeah, it's ex exceedingly useful when you're using um, some of the more expensive stuff like. Uh, I don't know, maybe a staff or something. And they're quite. Which we'll get into not next too, time. Not too hard to make them, in the look of them. Yeah, they're pretty simple. It's quite a manner of use fabric, which is just a shard and some leather. There will require some research to do. You see there, Alex is uh, showing usage of one of the staffs. He's giving me. Sneak peek for a future episode there. The frostbite effect by doing that, which is a custom potion effect, which is basically poison, but it also um, slows you down. Indeed. So, that's the thing. Um, if you're in creative mode and you're trying to do research, you don't need to type in any of the letters, you just click on it and it will do the research. And so you can just sort of go through it. Like so. Cheat your way through. Yeah. That's the thing. Um, so, right yeah, is that? About it for this episode, I would say. It's the uh, introduction to the Lovecraft, what adds to the game and basic mana stuff, right? Yeah. We'll discuss some of the uh, uses for this uh, stuff that we've got in the next episode. Indeed. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll uh, see you next time. See you next time. Right. Okay, so the thing we didn't mention was the fact that robes actually um, have special effects depending on which type you have. So the water robes give you extra health. Uh, yeah, I think the fire, fire robes need to give you extra damage and attack speed. Yep, and the Earth robes make you move slower, but give you much higher armor rating than the other robes give, and also knockback resistance. Uh, Lord, make you a little bit speedier. And attack faster, and all that. And 
Light Lord increases your attack speed and attack damage again, much like fire, but a different sort of ratio. More yeah. damage. And dark is the same as light, pretty much. So another thing that is in this is um, these tools that you can make using the gems, and they have special effects. So let's grab the water ones. All the water ones do the same thing, which is why you're holding them lets you breathe underwater. So that's always nice. Does that do an aqua affinity as well, or just breathe underwater? Just breathe underwater, I believe. Uh, when you craft them, it doesn't put aqua affinity on it, but... Breathing underwater is still pretty good, right? So, I mean, they do have very good turn They're mining this dirt really quick down there. That might just be the effect of the water breathing enchantment, though. Or maybe just the speed of the shovel. Anyway, it still mines underwater pretty damn quickly, so. Fair enough. Yeah, it might, it might be the water breathing enchantment doing that. No, I think it's a bit slower, but it's not very slow. They're quite just... good tools. Yes, yeah, so the water tool gives you um, that. The fire tools let you. Uh, I think they give you fire resist. Or, oh no, they set things on fire when you hit them with it. Ouch. <laughs> that probably did quite a lot of damage, I imagine. I uh, okay, have water robes. Give me some extra health. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, that is helpful. Um, That's very helpful. The air tools make you jump higher and sprint faster. Speak to Stacking it. on top of the current robes, moving fast. Yes, exactly. Stacking on top nicely. Move very fast with the air stuff. Indeed. The earth stuff packs a bigger punch. Uh, and it also divines the area so you can see what the highest value item is when you point through the ground. So, so can you craft these different tools and armors when you're um, not got their uh, research done? No, you have to research for them. Right here. Just demoing this. So, currently the highest value item I can find is gravel. In this area. <laughs> is or, or clay, in fact. Clay. Yeah, clay is currently the highest value item. Sand. So the earth tool just divides a quick 3x3x3 three by three by three area and points out what the best item in there is that you might be interested in digging up. Useful down on diamond level, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, of course, there are the um, other things which are basically better versions of this stuff, but they're not, but they're not tools. Yeah. Um, the lights, uh, it gives you haste 2, and you can place down these sort of glowing anomaly things, which uh, are a bit light, they're like a torch. Uh, like that. Nice. You can see it's uh, quite nice, and when you break them, they just disappear. This doesn't cost mana, by the way, this is just like free light sources. So, that's a thing. So nice. And darkness gives you night vision. Ah, it's the tools. There you go. Yep. So, that's the thing. So, this will just give you straight night vision when you're um, around. That's the thing. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. It's nice to have these uh, extra bonuses. So you get into something when you actually use them. Mm. What you doing? You trying to put that torch back? Using the wrong tool. I see. Fair enough. Yeah. Actually, well, if I replace my torches, I think so that's a good place to. Uh, Properly in this now that we've explained everything. Okay. Cool. Right. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you next time where we will talk about probably starves, maybe broomstones, um, and this uh, artifacts that you can use to, uh, well, just better versions of tools, pretty much. So. See you next see time. You then. All right. Bye.